In this problem, we have a geometric proof. In geometry, a proof is this system of statements and reasons why those statements are true, where you start with some given information and you end up at something you want to prove. The whole point of proofs in geometry is to take the things we already know and try to prove some new things. And because we're careful about our logic and our reasons, we can be certain that the proof uh, we arrive at at the end is actually true. So that's what proofs are about. In this problem, we've got the proof written out already. Um, and then we have to supply the correct reasons. But I think with any proof, what's important to do first is just to walk through the logic of this without even looking at the statements in the proof and see if you can just understand it for yourself first. So let's try that. Um, we're given two things. The given information is the information you start with. We're told that QPS, the measure of QPS equals the measure of VPT. So this angle right here is the same size as this angle right here. We're also told that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. So this angle and this angle are the same. And we're supposed to prove that the measure of angle two and the measure of angle four are the same. And hopefully just by looking at this, that makes sense to you. If this big chunk and this big chunk have the same measure and these two little chunks on each have the same measure, then the leftover parts must also have the same measure. At this point, you might say, OK, well, um, I've proved it for myself. That's good enough. But we have to follow the step-by-step -step logic. So let's see if we can walk through these statements one at a time and follow their reasoning. The first statement says that the measure of angle QPS, so that's this angle over here on the left, equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. So we're explicitly stating that this angle is made up of these two smaller angles. And then we do the same for VPT. So this angle over here on the right is made up of angle 3 and angle 4. Then we state that the measures of the two bigger angles are the same as each other. And that's a given piece of information. So we, we knew that to begin with. Then we have this statement in number 4. It says the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. It's really just saying, again, that these two big angles are the same as each other. But it's important to state that explicitly so we can do some sort of math in the proof here. Um, but this statement here, number four, is really the same as number three with substituting these chunks in for QPS and VPT. Then in number five, we have the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. That's a piece of given information again. But it's really important to state that because we're going to substitute. You see, measure of angle one equals measure of angle three, we can take that then and put it in right there. And that's what you get in number six. We've just substituted in the measure of angle three for the measure of angle one. And what you'll notice then is on both sides of the equation, you have a measure of angle three. We can, by just you know algebraic rules of addition and subtraction, we can subtract a measure of angle three from both sides and end up with this. And that's exactly where we wanted to arrive. So that's the logic of the proof. Hopefully, you're still following. Let's see if we can work on the, the reasons. Let me grab a different tool. So first of all, some of the reasons here are going to be given. Um, and I'm just going to pop those in right away. This piece is given, and this piece is given. And I know that because it says that right up here. Okay. Now, the measure of QPS is the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. This is a property. It basically is the property that says that two angles add up to make the bigger angle. This is the angle addition property. And you'll see that in the big list of, of possible reasons. So we're going to throw that in here. And we're going to throw it in here again. Same for VPT as it is for QPS. So, so far we've got angle addition property, angle addition property given. And then, well, let's look at line number four now. It says... The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. I said that that was basically statement 3, but substituting in this information from statement 1 and 2. So this is a substitution property. And the thing about a substitution property in these proofs is they want you to tell which lines you used to come up with this statement. We actually used three lines here. This line, 
and this line and this line. So one, two, and three. So we'll just jot that in here. Substitution property using lines one, two, and three. All right, five was our given. Let me grab that arrow tool again. Now number six, we have the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. And what I mentioned is that that's line four where we took the information from line five and substituted it in. So we're going to have another substitution property. And this time we're going to be using lines four and five. All right, last one. What we did from line to get to from line six to line seven is we simply we did some subtraction. We subtracted a measure of angle three from both sides. So this is the addition and the subtraction property. So that is an introduction to proofs.